Mirage starting on the T side, OG on the CT side. Seeing a smoke and some flashes. There are two smokes, so yeah, there's gonna be they're gonna be blocking off a couple of positions here, and then flashes going over the wall. Straight for a Neofrag, trying to turn around, but he's not finding the headshot. Finally will. Oh <laughs> no! He just almost pistol whipped config. That's ridiculous. And now Dex has shown up as well, and they've been slowed down, and Astralis just not even finding the fights that they need here. They got some good timing on Neofrag. He had some low sensitivity going on. You could see the awkwardness, and he still won. Yeah. He still gets it done. That's that's a sign. A lot of things are going your way. Yeah, this is uh, magnificent, and just for whatever reason, never really no real reaction until it was a little bit too late for Config. Still just focused on making his jump and getting out safely. Good double kill. Alright, soft little high fives. Yeah, starting it out slow. But that is a good start for OG. They'll take it. Can see the pressure that Neo Frank is under because he he recognizes what's coming. He knows there's going to be a flashbang. So if he just if he just swings wide and you know tries to go for the for the fight there, he could be blind and dead. So not an easy position to be in. Three man peek at top mid. And they get some dinks in. Neo Frank still with the double, so didn't go down for free. And creeping up his neck. So not really scared to risk the MP9. Glaive back there. Yeah, there we go. Finding him out. A little bit of damage. They've all lost two people already. I guess it's slightly expensive for uh, for OG, but they'll take it. Yeah, slightly expensive, but no big deal. Heading into round number three. Astralis need a good little bounce back here on Mirage. Yeah, that would be quite something. We started out the first map talking about the potential for Blamef and Config on, the, on that particular map especially to do a lot of work. Ended up being Glaive who was doing a lot of the, the hard lifting on that one, but... You'd still love to see that duo of Blame F and Config do some work on a map like Mirage. They have AKs out already in the third round. Ooh, good shot from Blame. Neofrag had the chance. A couple bullets whizzed past, but Nexus slid into position now in his place. So at least the death of, of Neofrag has gotten Nexa into a strong position for an early flank. Especially it helps when Degster finds a kill in middle. Still over a minute and 20 seconds left, so... I feel like at some point, BlameF is going to have to give away this position in B-Halls and fall back and get Surely. the bomb to meet up over at the 8 bomb site, and, and then hopefully that timing, if you're OG, is when Nexa decides to move. That's happening just now because they want to leave Config in middle to lurk and to be a force towards the end of the round in the post plant, so that's going to be the opening for Nexa to find a timing. Well, and this defense is all in as well, with the double position at ramp like this. If they, if they lose this fight, then I don't even think anyone from the B-bomb side can rotate over. They might just have to give it up pretty quickly, so a little bit interesting. Yeah, it's actually a lot. Of the, I mean, having Dexter there almost seems a little bit redundant with the positioning of Nexa, yeah. Yeah, especially because he's going to be so far away. They have no information at middle at the time, so Dexter's just there to worry about catwalk. That is kind of a cool smoke, though. The timing on that actually does disrupt, I think, what Astralis wanted to do. And now Dexter is finally getting... Oh, sorry, Nexus start, got him starting to move out in that B hallway. And he's getting really close at the moment. I think everything right now rides on how long they can hold off on the A-bomb side. They probably can't win the fight entirely on their own. But just stay alive for five seconds, and maybe that's going to be worth it. Sip will get one of the early entries on Fiku, but there's 15 seconds left on the clock. And Flames is still back here. Oh, he drops one in a second. He is so good with the multi-kills. And Glaive, just no time at all here. Nexa coming up from behind, and he actually has a Molotov that he's held on to all along, but not even going to need it. Out in the open, just the Famas will do the job. That's a nice round for OG to pick up there. Real close for Astralis, but um, they had such a good read with that push from Nexa. And, and Mr. Double Kill himself, Flames, just, I mean, once again, delivering a round win. This is such a huge sequence for Flames to be able to get a double kill. They're even hard clearing him as well. Yep. I mean, what, what, a, what a showing he's having here at the fall groups. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I especially love it with the camera shot of Blame F. I know, yeah. just head and hands. Just... That's, uh, that's really one of the tragic sort of developments in Counter-Strike in general is that we sort of look, we, a lot of the time we lost the ability for people to yell at each other inside of a, you know, a studio or a LAN or something like that. So it's good to have it back here at the Blast Studio because it does make it just a little bit more fun, you know. Comfort gets sprayed down, try to be quick with it in the middle. Not what Danny was talking about with the fast smoke in the window, which by the way is great. Danny does. Unbelievable work. Yeah, great work. Zipix has dropped down. Fika won't have that information. Blame F is going to follow it up with the AK-47. That's smoke giving some cover for the cross. Farlig's in trouble. 
Just a lonely P250. Neil Frag making his move. Easy kill. Timing shot for Fiku doesn't come through. Retake isn't going to be coming from Market either. It's going to be coming from Catwalk. So even though Control of the Bombsite is over to Astralis, that's a good find with the boost up. A little bit of damage done. Nobody's crossed over. Now Glaive gets in with the bomb. Another smoke comes down. This is going to be a really delayed retake. And actually a little bit of an X factor with Zipix's position in Market. If he can hit some nice shots with the Deagle, that might ruin a lot of things for OG. It, th this whole round, they played it like they don't care about the bomb plant at all. Like, they're just going to play the retake and win it. So, hopefully they will, because that was the plan from the get-go, it felt like. Nice headshot. Glaive going to keep going. Oh, is he ready for another one? Fiku's taking down Sip, so Glaive might have to st step up and try and take another swing at it here. Fiku goes down, and there's oh. Glaive. A third headshot. The Deagle doing all of the work in the round, and there's nothing Dexter could do about it. That is a stolen round. Yeah, that is a nasty sequence from Glaive. I can't believe he just delivered three headshots in that fashion. So disgusting. Look at the power in that clenched fist. Yeah, he's... He was ready to break somebody's fingers. Man. I actually thought... The fact that Fiku didn't try for the, for the blind shot for the smoke, and the fact that there was no... Oof. There was no stress happening over at Catwalk, I thought... Oh, it's fine. They know what's coming, but they do, they, they're in a three on five. They, they're just going to retake it. It's no problem. I, I mean, I still felt like that was a pretty decent position to be in. I, what can you do? Glaive hits three one yeah. bullet deal headshots. That's a bit tough, isn't it? And that might have been like the one weakness in the round that came to fruition uh, for OG is just not having anyone really in market to prevent that aggressive stance in the window and in the doorway. What a turnaround. No money left on OG. They fully invest into this. The op is still in the hands of Dexter, but Nexa is relegated down to a 5-7. Yeah, they'd love to reset Astralis right away here, OG, but it's risky to be buying into uh, to this kind of a situation. They have, what, two smokes, two flashbangs. That is all the needs they have. They have at least a couple of kits in place still, but... Not that much to fight with here. OG probably need to secure a, a one or two man advantage before any action really happens at the bomb site. If it goes into an after plant, they don't have that much to really fight with. So it could get very awkward for the CT side. The bomb is getting picked up and kind of going a little bit of everywhere. Oh, oh. Flames nearly good for another double. I thought he had it. It's, it's really hard for him to hold back from two kills, isn't it? It's, it's really difficult, the position that he's putting himself in. He's been so disgusting these past two days. Good trade from Neofrag to clean up on Far Lake. Blame F is going to come lurking up Catwalk a little bit late. Smoke's going to hold him at bay. And obviously, Neofrag has no idea. Scoped up. There's Glaive with the kill, and Blame F comes through. Right when he's about to pull the trigger, Dexter's going to try and pick up the pieces, but I think this round is lost. If he doesn't get a kill here very, very quickly, they've got no business going for this. Especially because his teammate is so far away. That's, that's a risky jump. He could have got picked off from Dexter there. But since they're not showing themselves, the chances now, it's not impossible. He could look for X's, I guess, but he's not going to get into the bomb side at this point. Wow, that, that move from Neofrag, you're right. He had no idea, maybe had no reason to suspect. And on the other hand, if he picks up the AWB and gets a kill on someone jumping out of the window, then he's the hero. Good bit of damage, but the round is going to go to Astralis. Two to three, still in OG's favor, but that did not look like a winnable round. The two for one trade at the start just looked like it was going to be everything. Yeah. And I think that's exactly why you didn't expect Blame F. You know, Flames gets the, the one kill, he gets the tag, Neofrag cleans it up, and they didn't they never actually saw Blame F. You're not thinking there's gonna be a third player lurking around. So good kill from Blame F onto Neofrag right when he's about to pull the trigger. Actually, he did pull the trigger, missed the shot. Three to two. And OG's out of money. Saved M or excuse me, saved AK, saved AWP. Let's see what they can do. Couple of flashbangs picked up to warm your little heart. Yeah. Always a good idea. And that AWP at Dexter, he was very passive with it when they were on Ancient on the CT side, when that was the only thing that he had. There were a couple of rounds there, but didn't do too much. See if he can find some more action with it here on the CT side of Mirage. He's already in middle. A little bit forward. There's a nice tag. He doesn't really get the headshot. Now he's... Yeah, got to be thinking about trying to escape as well. You don't want to be stuck in here for too long. They have Molotovs and a lot of other things too. A little bit of a wall bang coming through. Take, tags him up at least a little bit. A config to get his first kill of the map. 
look at the way that OG is a little bit discombobulated at the moment. Uh, everyone's kind of huddled around window room and murder hole. Flames is going to be here with the USP. That's not going to get the job. Excuse me? It will get the job done on config. Somehow, some way. <laughs> like seven bullets later, he's, he's able to do it. But the AWP is rotated to the B-bomb site. The AK-47 is the only real piece of defense available. Timing on the Zipix is everything. He's peering in this direction. Free kill. Bomb is dropped. Oops. Yeah, and an extra drops on the... They can't even just go back and pick it up quickly. He's ready for this. He sees it coming and takes down. Finally gets just next door on his own winning the round right now. And now the AWP is on catwalk. They can they can defend this bomb. Oh, this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare status. Dexter needs to be aggressive next. Almost with one more. And Dexter falls away. He didn't want the fight. They still don't have the bomb. 27 seconds and Dexter's going to go for this. He's got a kid in hand from the previous round as well. Clave, though, is ready to receive him. USP out, but Clave is frozen in time on the other side. He does not want to take a single step forward. And now the bomb is planted, but are they going to be ready for it? Blame F sneaking forward, still USP in hand. Got to be careful now. The orc comes back out. He has to commit to this and win it instantly. Just jiggling it out. Oh, that is such a play. And it's a one versus one. And like you pointed out, he does have the kit. Maybe sneaking forward and picking up the AK instead. Still a little bit of time here. Deep flash over. If he goes straight for it, Glaive might not be close enough to stop the defuse. Does he realize, Dexter? He's looking everywhere, but he just can't find him. Now he goes Ooh. for the defuse, but I think his back is showing Glaive. He should be able to get it, and he will. Oh, he's so close. What a scary round. Astralis, though, they make it through. Yeah, just barely. That is so sketchy. What a performance from Nexa to be able to put a stop to that, to make it, to keep it within reach. Just the two weapons brought into this round, the AK and the AWP. That's nasty. Good positioning from Glaive, though. Way to be patient. That was brutal. Blame F had no chance there. And yeah, if it's a different defuse position, maybe Dexter's able to stick it out and actually get it at the end of the day. But I think Dexter's... It's then previous rounds. Top con smoke coming out from Glaive, I'm assuming. Ooh, Flames with the first, and he's going to duck away. Good kill on a Blame F trying to cross over. Man advantage for OG's defense. That's a lot of mid-control taken away from Astralis as well. Config is way more passive as he follows up. So nobody's going to be able to push over towards a chair, push down mid towards underneath window. And that did actually look a little bit like Blame F wanted to make the run that Danny was showing us in that video. Yep. Maybe a little bit delayed, and obviously in the, in the video example that Danny was giving, you couldn't get there in time, so maybe... Blame if had a slightly worse spawn and Flames had a slightly better spawn. Hard to say, but he did catch him. Ooh, Farlock's gonna make his play. He's feeling bold. He's feeling frisky. Deep Molotov is gonna hold that Glaive. Farlock still hasn't peeked out again. He did work up the courage to take a uh, initial glance into the bomb site and see nothing. The Molotov could actually be interesting. Doesn't go quite deep enough. I thought maybe he was gonna catch Dexter, who's back there with the M4. 50 seconds, and they're gonna start to hit this bomb site, which. Could be scary. Flames, though, is nearby on the stairs. It's going to be a quick trade. Sip taking down Dexter in return. 40 seconds. And Flames has shown up. Second kill of the round for him. He wants more. <laughs> Building those multi-kills. He is such a god right now. Fourth kill for him. He's up to nine in total and winning another round for OG. He's doing such a good job of just playing within his own within his own game until there's a moment to pounce and grab the extra kills, right? He's not overextending and he knows what's coming. Look at this comfort to be able to wait patiently for Glaive to make the jump. And then you're just playing off your teammates you're playing off and trading kills that have come out already trading off information that's been passed over to you and that's a quad kill in the round from flames what a stress in the eyes of config he's one and seven as well Farley is two and seven sips got three and six got a couple of players there that need to do something more the eagles out in this round good mid-air headshot picks him out of the sky yikes get that head armor kids fiku knows the footsteps knows the position of Zipix. Takes a confident fight, easy headshot. OG starting to look comfortable again. Starting to look like they remember what it's all about here on the CT side. OG's looking like they want to send Astralis into a qualifying match in the absolute dumpster in terms of emotional energy. What a <laughs> yeah, what a rough day it could be. Five to three. And a ninth round. Smoke in the window. Jump out here, but Config. Oh, he still wins the fight with a Galil, no less. That is a big victory. Dexter, though, looking to take it back. Almost getting the right angle. Yeah, he has the right idea, but Config's going to stay alive somehow. Nice start. 
Good for Astralis. Yeah, I mean, it's a big name to take down first. Quiet on the map. Yeah, they want to make sure that there's no trickery from OG. Again, a notorious map that's one for CT aggression. So, can't really blame Astralis for wanting to make absolutely sure. And this is also what they did on an Ancient that works so well, is you find an opening kill, and then Astralis just kind of waited for the follow-up play that was going to come. Config waiting again, but it doesn't matter. He was low on HP from Flames earlier, so that's the equalizing kill. And Flame F doesn't want to work up the courage to take the peak on the fallback. So we're going to go into the middle stage of this round in an even game until Glaive responds from Palace. That's an easy kill. Nexus position is known. Good frag from Glaive. That should be the round. That should be four for Astralis. But Fiku's coming over to try and pick up the pieces. I mean, if you could get the range with the AK, maybe he can win this fight. But once the bomb is down, it's a different matter. Finally going to be responsible for that. So a little bit of damage, but nothing to stop him from the plant, really. So now it's probably time to back on out. I appreciate the attempt, but... You needed a really strong kill to even stop the bomb from, from getting planted there. And it doesn't happen, so... Four to five. Glaive taking it upon himself to, to win the round. Yeah, that's just... Uh, that first kill that he gets out of Palace, I'm assuming it's just the angle out towards jungle that he just finds... A player maybe a little bit lazy in the rotation back. We'll find out. Good shot from Config. Again, the head armor making these Galils do some work. Ooh, okay. that's a good find. Yeah, it really makes a difference, doesn't it, at the end of the day. We save the remaining rifles here on the OG side. No one being challenged. So it was a good little run, but still, you got to be careful if you're if you're OG here. You don't have, a, I mean, you're almost any buffer. So yeah, no, there's there's no kind of economic space to work with for OG. Down to nothing after this buy, although it's a very very strong buy. Dexter with the op. Four, four strong rifles behind it. Plenty of utility. Two kits to work with also. Easy to see that it's Glaive doing all the lifting on Ancient. Now all the lifting on Mirage. He's super determined at the moment to... To win this. Does not want to give it up easy. Inferno is the deciding match if we get there. And I hope that we do. Some real tension. <laughs> Maybe especially for Astralis like we've been saying. Forward position for Neofrag. I'm going to smoke it off and try and take a peek into middle, but that is a suspicious smoke. Either way, if you're on the T side, you kind of know, all right. Ooh, look at the timing of this boost up as well. There's there's nobody even here to help out with this. Dexter's going to come back. Good kill from Flames. Good find from Dexter, patiently waiting for that exact play. Blame F had an opportunity. And now there are men down. Blame started to make his way onto the bomb site. Solo play with the Galil. It worked last time, so why not again? I, well, I like it too, because he's put himself in a position where it's hard to tell that he's even here. Like, they might know someone's aggressive, but you're not going to think someone's just kind of pushed out to this position and waiting. He's got cover because Zipex is peering towards window room from jungle, so he knows nobody's going to come from that angle. At this point, it's all if anyone from OG tries to move and shift into the bomb site. But this flank could ruin everything. Yeah, Fiku, he's been running this way for a while now. 30 seconds, he's almost at the ramp. They haven't even put the bomb down. Oh, and that delay for config could be really painful. They are going to get the bomb plant, but Fiku's surely going to get a kill against Config here. A little bit of a long-range spray, and that should be panic on the Astralis side. He has no idea what it look right now, Glaive. They're just surrounding him. Tries to get the shot here, but surely going to get shot on the side of the head. Nexa eventually showing up, and Sip, he's again got no real estate to stand on. He, he just can't survive in that position, so great flank, although there was a real moment in time where Glaive could have surprised him. That... that that four versus three could have started a three on three if Glaive just gets one kill because they just wander onto the bomb site. Yeah, and, and I mean, who knows if it's just like straight up like solid self control to not try and push into the bomb site, or if it's because Fiku's flanking. But the defenders kind of realize they don't they don't need control of the bomb site. They don't need to shift into that position. They have a teammate coming through T spawn. They can just wait, see what Astralis is going to do, and because they don't actually press the issue to challenge anything, Glaive's little off angles never never come to fruition, never yield anything for Astralis. Single Mac 10, AKs for the rest of it. Not all the nades you would want, but certainly some of them. Dexter, though, a lot more punch behind him on that AWP. Going to be taking down Config early in the round. Still a tough game for him and Farligan Sip. Three out of five players on Astral is not having the best time to begin with. That can obviously change, but they don't have all day. And looking at the scoreboard for OG, 
everyone's doing something. Got the whole lineup ready to fight. Now they just slow it right down. Not that I get anything for it, although there is a little bit of a double push happening over here at the A ramp. Glaive. Up in the palace, so they have, they're not going to find anyone. And they're not going to be found. Not quite yet. Now starting to make their moves. Good shot from Glaive. The off was not set. Was not ready. A little bit of leg shows underneath the smoke. That's an easy kill for Flames. Negs has cleared out a ramp. So, again, a little bit of an insurance policy. This is almost like that flank from the previous round. Flames going to fight in the fire. Goes down. Neofrag pulling attention away. And Glaive is aware of the possibility. Nexus position. He's got another one. The captain of Astralis delivering all the critical kills. <laughs> it really is. What a ridiculous performance this is from Glaive so far. Double kill up to 14. PQ on his own with absolutely zero chance to win this round. At a minimum, he would probably need a smoke to put on top of the bomb to force a fight and probably get a kill before he even tried that. Can get some exit kills here, but I don't think he's going to get any closer to the actual defuse. So, should be a 5-6 to six scoreline here. Astralis coming back into it. Yeah, there's a good exit. The rest of them waiting by the ramp to make sure he's not tricking anyone. And it's going to be the round, so... Man, if not for Glaive, they might just lose this best of three almost immediately. I know, they, they might have been, they might just be completely washed on this map as well. He had that incredible triple kill earlier as well, coming out of Palace that, that, that delivered such a huge round at a big moment as well. I believe Glaive was the player that Launders picked as the one that he was the most excited about across the last 10 years of Counter-Strike, you know, in the context of the 10-year anniversary and all the rest of it. Okay. Um, Interesting choice. Yeah. I Very avant-garde. Yeah, I think that's that's probably more rare, but you could probably do, you could defend that for a long time if you wanted to. It could be a long discussion. Definitely has a, an insane career behind himself. So. Yeah, yeah, he does. Well, here we go. Calls a little pop through the A ramp. Thinks he's taking advantage of a low buy. There's rifles out, but oh, everyone's blind. Everybody is so blind. I don't know how Glaive's alive. I have no idea how he survived that kind of a swing. And it looks like they almost just want to fall back and disappear, but they've dumped all the utility. There's no plan B behind this tactic. It's all to make this work. MAC-10 doing damage, but not finding any kills. It's chaos. <laughs> it's so hectic. And now the SMG chimes in. Glaive goes down, traded off by Blame F. And look at it. Astralis coming out on top of all the insanity. Four on three at the moment, but we're not done yet. Nope, it's going to continue. Confix still got some health on him here. Ready to see if anyone's going to come through the window. I've rarely have ever seen... Such all-out madness happening. More smokes, more flashbangs, more shots through. Everyone's blind, and they just, they're just not finding the kills. But finally, it's going to be Astralis coming up with a big lead here. Two versus four, and probably time for OG to save what they got. Ooh. They even can. Good find from Zip. That's going to seal it. And this is a great moment for Astralis to just take control of this half. There's going to be three rounds left after this, and there's no money for OG. Perfect timing for Astralis to deliver the knockout punch. Feels like a really rare moment where you can set up all the initial utility for an A execute, get no kills, kind of have the utility almost, you know, peed out, and then recommit to the fight and still win it. Feels like most of the time, if you don't get that, at least a little bit of a, of a connection on the first swing, it's hard to come back into it. This is so crazy how much flashbangs and utilities just spent to just spam through smoke. I don't know how you can have any kind of clean communication if you're any of those players just stuck in that choke point. Round 13. Yeah, tied up. Which, from Astralis point of view, is amazing news. Looking at the economy, it's even better. USP is not even a flashbang. All grouped up, though. Out for a little... A little company trip, a little get together. Oh, they're gonna boost up into the window. It's great. I appreciate this. You can boost on the window sill, like right next to where Fiku is. Okay. And then the top player can lean really far forward. Sure. So you can see people's legs as they're coming through if they if they hug the wall on the right side from the T point of view. Nice. Yeah. It's actually easy to set up. Okay. Well, it's not, yeah. The nice little stack towards the B bomb site. 
Yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna denigrate your stack in any way. All right. That one, I'm fine. Cool. I. It's kind of random. It's a, a, it's all the other ones that. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the more insane positions. Yeah. There's just this round is just nothing's happening. Stack towards the B bomb site. Astralis goes towards A. Did you know you can um you can with an AWP you can wallbang the default plant spot in B from the market through the rosary shelves whatever they are. Okay. I didn't know that. No, it's doable. No one's ever... No one's ever tried it? No. Now, when you say doable, are you saying it will connect with some damage? Or are you saying... It's gonna... I th it's something reliable. I think it's gonna do... I think it'll do some 60-some damage if you do it. Okay. So probably, you're not gonna outright kill someone, but... And if you hit him in the head, will it kill him? Yeah, definitely kill him. Okay. But I'm assuming, I'm assuming either way, they're gonna stop planting, <laughs> you know? Sure. They hear the AWP take that. Even if you take 20 damage, you probably stop planting because it's the orb, you know? You're like, oh, what's happening? Um, I'm trying to imagine that lineup right now. I can't. I can't envision it in my head. It is obscure. I won't lie. Okay. But it can be done. Um, six to seven. Astralis with a a real nice return. And look at what it's done for Glaive. He's pulled all of the, the players in behind him. Right. Config starting to do a little bit more. Finally starting to do a little more. Sips up there with seven kills. Everyone started to believe a bit now that the captain has shown up, and that's great. Usually, what's the idiom? Captain going down with the ship, but the ship's not going down, Jason. It's still afloat. Still afloat. It's like that one ship from Pirates of the Caribbean. What's the the one that, that keeps coming up out of the water? It's been a the while. The Flying Dutchman? There we go. Yeah. Someone can Photoshop. Crewed by the, un the undead? Yeah. If somebody could Photoshop tentacles on the glaive, we, we'd have we'd have some kind of meme going. Perfect. I um, always love it when tentacles come into the mix. I know you do. Seven uh, to six. <laughs> Let's pause it there. Neofrag's gonna push up into the corner. Nice flashbang. Nice flashbang, nice kill. Even checks really briefly to the right to make sure no one's up on the flower pot. He's gonna stay aggressive. Coming back for more. Timing is everything. He's got glaive. He didn't reload after. He had plenty of time, but he just didn't. He's like, ah, no, it's not necessary. Next sip with a double, and OG, they they have a little bit of a knack for for getting back into the round or the half, right as it feels like they're about to be completely eclipsed. Because this was looking like it could easily be a 9-6 finish in favor of Astralis, which would have been really something. But now we're going to type the scoreline the other way, 7-7, um, seven seven, and that means OG could still get an 8th round, obviously. Blamef trying to fight it. Long range to connect that spray with. And now 1 versus 3 with no health at all some good damage molotov on top but nexa is going to escape and with only 15 seconds it's not so much even the mechanics for, for blame here it's just you can't really put the bomb down with this little time in a one versus three so try as you might it's going to be seven 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 one round left in the first half og actually both teams looking to take a lead it was og on ancient who was able to take a first half lead Good aggression, good flashbang, catching Farlag out in the open, and then finding Glaive as well. That's a tough fight to win when you're peeking into him, holding the angle, but OG handles everything well. Double kill from Nexa. He was so flashed, uh, Farlag at the beginning there. Yeah, his eyes were burnt out of his head. <laughs> the goggles, they do nothing. <laughs> That's a classic reference. I love it. I wonder if looking into a scope will magnify the effect of a flashbang. It feels like it should, on some level, make sense. You know? I'm willing to test this out if you're the one looking through the scope. Yeah, I think if you have a night vision on, that's that's where things get real rough. But, yes. Um, oh, just the, the blind tap almost getting the headshot, but still a lot of damage on the set. Neo Frag gonna get traded. Fiku is there. It's a good one-two punch combination and a flank coming in from Flames. I don't think they... Do they even know? I have no idea. Blamef isn't looking in this direction. He certainly should know now with that Molotov, and he somehow gets away. Is it Exo aware that someone's pushed all the way up to the close right? That smoke, oh, oh it just barely covered him. Now he knows. Glay was way too tucked in, not actually looking for a fight. Blamef's in some trouble. He goes down next, and OG. 3v1 to take the second half advantage. It's going to be 8 to 7. Everything for Astralis. They really fought. Glaive has been battling to get his team back into the mix of things. They must win this half. They have to get to a third map. This is a huge day for Astralis, and they, they just need it. There's no there's no slowing down right now. Yeah, this is a game where you really need to get some positive vibes going. Let's see if they can close it out, bring it right back. Down one round into the pistol. Two smokes put up. They know what's coming. Pop out of the 
Falls as well. There's the duelies from Glaive. Nice double kill straight to the domes of Neofrag and Flames. Finally responded upon and responded upon in a big way. Dexter's going to keep pushing. Eventually goes down and we're in a two on two. <laughs> so much aggression. You could tell the bloodlust there once he had the fight going. He just wanted to keep it up. Flashbangs are all gone. Oh, <laughs> what a nice peek from Fiku. And that means now they only have to worry about config. And now they don't know where he is. There's One no flashbang. kit, no smoke yet. They don't even have to fight him. It's a 10 second defuse. Don't give him the chance here. Flash is amazing, but even then, leave him alone. He is never going to be able to get this bomb defused. Fiko toying with him a little bit, just peeking with the shoulder and Convict's realizing there's no way. Just save the armor if you can and try and walk away from it. Maybe get a couple of parting kills. You can buy some more in the next round. Get one of those Famasas, perhaps, if you can keep it up. Nice attempt, but Nexa will find him at the end. And it's OG to win the pistol in the second half. Yeah, what a great recovery after the two kills from Glaive. God, that, if you're Glaive and you go down there, you feel like, I've done my job. This should be a win for them, but Dexter is just a beast. Look at that one. Cleans up Farlig. Someone from Astral is trying to come through the smoke and just gets absolutely deleted. I believe that was Blame F. Tough he round. Okay, just noises now. Almost true, true sounds, which I like. I appreciate that. Maybe get some Thomas the Tank Engine memes going. My favorite. <laughs> it's a personal favorite of mine. Uh. <laughs> it sounds so stupid. It's, uh, um, towards, yeah. towards the beat bombs that we go, stop. I don't want to hear it. No, it's all right. No. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Two players inside the site, make that one. Good control from Dexter. Farley peeks out with the USB, he goes down as well. Dexter's feeling precise. And that's the site, as Blame F says, I want nothing to do with it. I'll save this P250. Just to uh, just to rewind a little bit, the, uh, the the shot that Dexter got the second kill, that was first bullet Glock, right? He he got Glaive eventually, and then he spun around and fired one bullet towards CT spawner. I think that was what killed Blame F, maybe? It's so ridiculous. Uh, that was far like uh, he'd, been, far, yeah. he'd been tagged up by Fiku already, I believe. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, it was a one bullet shot straight to the dome, but yeah, he'd already That's been still damaged. Yeah, crazy. So pretty nasty. Sometimes the Glock just like works out in your favor. Yeah, it, it, it's, it could be, it's hard. It's hard. It's got like a, 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 a wide variety band there. Like you don't really know what you're getting. Like sometimes you keep shooting and nothing happens. Sometimes, sometimes. that goosh is just instant every player Ooh. you look at. Yeah. Just like the Deagle, sometimes with the Deagle, you watch players and you see a sequence and they get that first headshot and you really like feel the momentum. Yeah. Like they're like, this Deagle feels on. It's, it's been calibrated perfectly. Seven to ten. Three round gap. Money back in the hands of Astralis. It's finally to open up the round onto Dexter. And this is a critical round. Oh, Nexa, he's so close. Oh. And he nearly uses the momentum. He nearly gets a double entry. And that would have been everything. Awkward Molotov to force flames out. That's a friendly Molotov, so could be a little bit sketchy. Nice counter flash as well. And Config will clean it up with a double. Yeah, some missed timings there for, for OG. Got a little bit dis, uh, disorganized, but if Nexa had been able to get that second kill onto Farleg with that MAC-10, been able to transfer it over, that would have been something special. That would have really thrown this round to hell for Astralis. Because he gets this kill, and there's no defender here. Then you have an attacker in that position, and Astralis' defense has to play things much differently. So that is very narrow to being a, a tough situation for Astralis to handle. Roganut. Supremely happy with the, with the round. Ooh, timing is good. Difficult spray when someone is jumping past like that, but conflict's going to be found at the start of the round, so they're definitely going to take that. Four on five to begin the 19th round with. And more than anything, OG want to make absolutely sure Astralis never have the comfort of having well, the AWP on Farleg and just all of the rifles. That did happen at one point on Ancient where they had it was on the T side, but Astralis had that huge bank. Yeah. And they could keep buying three or four rounds in a row. Ooh, that's a brutal nade. 55 damage. Actually, another HE tossed over to him. Blame F's going to do it again. If Flames had stuck around, likely would have been dead, but he's moved out of that position due to the damage he's taken. You're exactly right. If you're OG, you're feeling like maybe not a breaking point, but you're like, we, we can apply a lot of pressure yeah. economically if we can win this round. Glaive is actually stuck in no man's land for the moment. He might get caught in an awkward position, but it's Neofrag instead. Fiku, Glade never realized it. Good trade. Ooh, through the smoke. He's almost got Farlig. He's almost got him. Low HP. Farlig's able to get into the bomb site, and Blame F is able to hold on to Top Con. How is he still alive back here? 40 seconds, and it is a three on three. They started to get the bomb up as well, though. That A ramp. They, if they find him, yeah, he's dead. Just didn't have the health to take any fight. Blame F is going to be found eventually, Nectar. Slightly awkward start to that battle. Sip 
I don't think it's worth it though. They just don't have the depth of, uh, of funds here. You know, you need the money because uh, Farley can buy, Glaive can can buy his own. Zipex, I think, should be able to drop something, maybe a FAMAS. And he's got no kit. And now he's in the yep. crappy situation where he's boxed in. Even escaping could be difficult. It's a triangle of doom. He has picked up a kit in the meantime, so, so his tiny bit of money recovered. And assuming he can still escape the round, maybe that is something... They're not going to be running far enough away for him to just sneak onto the site and get a defuse. Those are so rare. It's, it feels like whenever it happens, all pro players are just so worried about it happening again that they keep checking forever. But every once in a while, once every thousand games or so. Yeah, there's at least an admirable attempt. Yeah. Not like... It's usually G2. Yeah, well... That's not. Back in the day, you could uh, you could just throw a smoke in the bomb site, and everyone was so stupid that no one checked it, and you would sit inside your own smoke. Yeah. Team. That's what we need. That's what that's what they need to battle OG at this point in time. Yeah, I think that's like kind of the great one of the great like unspoken factors of this Astralis team is individually all these players just seem lost in all the stresses and all the frustrations of not being able to find a solution to some of the issues they're having. And it just feels like individually everyone's playing at you know like 75% of their true potential. Yeah. A lot of fire on the balcony. Flames living up to his name in an unfortunate fashion. But again, that's a friendly Molotov. Last time he jumped into it, this time it he didn't take damage from me, but it stopped him from going anywhere. And it didn't seem like that was part of the plan because he kind of was awkwardly just st stood there. OG need to get this bomb planted like right now. And they've, they've like, lost the ability. They've been stalled out entirely. There's no more smokes jumping over. Dexter's got to provide an opening somehow, but I have no idea how he's going to do it. Astralis is just so patient. And look at the HP of all these players on OG. How the hell are you going to get back into this round? Good trades from Config. Neofrag's the only one left. Yep, hoping for one more kill, but it's not going to happen. Sip will take him down. Good double from Config. And yeah, I when, as soon as they realize they can't get the bomb plant, I even appreciate the idea of trying to move forward. But obviously what you're hoping moving in towards jungle like this is that maybe there's three people in CT spawn and only two people towards jungle and connector and you can, you can win the battle straight up there. But three people waiting around that area, just way too much to handle when you've only got a couple of people moving in. So, good job on Astralis. That was definitely one of the breaking points. And instead, it's OG back on pistols. Deagle on Dexter, though. And one on Neofrag. Should be insignificant to the outcome of the round. Not really worth it. Not at all. Just let them be if they're, if they're going to be... Let them chill. Yeah. Let them have their powwow. Going to be up here anyway, then... Yeah, you're not risking anything. You're not giving anything away. One deal shot would be great here, though. Although this is a near impossible position to actually clear. But if you get that one dig onto Zipix, there's not really any other defense. The next closest is config over a catwalk, and maybe you can at least get a bomb plant. Flames hoping to get config anyway. Oh, oh, oh. Nice shot. Can they find Sip as well? He's down by the do bench. Do it, baby. Yeah, they might as well do it quickly now because more backup is going to be showing up. Oh. There we go. Flames with another bang out shot. Three versus three. And at least they made it a bit expensive. But unfortunately, the bomb is kind of stuck in a no. position. Oh, the clock comes running in and catching Blamef. What a ridiculous play. And now Flames... Did he get a third one in there? There is a flank coming through. Farlik is walking through the hallways almost in time. Still 30 seconds left, by the way. Are they going to go aggressive? They might try and hunt him down. Flashbang. Oh, it's just a smoke instead. I thought maybe they're going to try and actually go and fight him. There's Farlik from the back and shutting down Nexa. Flames walking through the smoke. He hears him running. Almost catches him by the cash register. There's another headshot. And now it's a one versus one. Flames. Ten he's seconds. brought out the deagle. Yes. Eight seconds now. He's going to go pick up the bomb. He fakes it once. Farlik. He doesn't commit to it. And now he just has to hold it in. He it? can just barely get the bomb down. And he makes his escape. Two bullets left. Yep. Time for a reload. Farlik comes up in flames. He swings. Oh. And he gets it. Absolutely godlike. That's an unbelievable round. What the hell is going on with this guy at this event? This is wild. 
This should be an unwinnable round. Remember, two deagles picked up. That's it. No utility, no armor. This is all flames. What a god. <laughs> Go on, Jason. <laughs> okay, so just village lost to the tide. Not even a flood. Why'd you build it there in the first place? Yeah. Shout out to New Orleans. <laughs> Here we go, Dexter. Oh, they don't have anything to even rebuild the village. No, <laughs> they're out of funds. There's a gap in that smoke. That could have been really dangerous. Nineteen kills on Dexter, seventeen on Flames, and then fifteen, fourteen-ish for the rest. They are a really powerful unit right now, OG. It's out of that. I, I feel like I haven't seen them yet in this tournament show real weakness. Even in maps oh. that they've lost, they still look so powerful. Dexter, dinked up, low on health, but still gets a shot on Zip and yeah, good that read. Even, Zipix even heard that dink and that's what pulled him into the fight and he didn't even, he didn't even get a chance to really battle at it. Good shot from Dexter again, negating all the damage. Finally goes down to config, but no way to build on top of it. Blame F left in this flank. It's only a matter of time before the alarm bells start going off inside of OG and Fiku's gonna check it. Yeah. Good little jump. If ever there was a chance, you at least needed the instant one versus two from, from sneaking up behind, but gonna be walking away. Maybe down to watch a little bit of television. Not even. That's when you know you're in a tough spot, when not even TV will cheer you up. No. I don't think do kids watch TV anymore. I don't think they do. Uh, I mean, you gotta have something to watch Netflix on. I guess technically they're watching TV. I don't know, does that count? If you're watching your computer, it's not the same as it. <laughs> I don't know. Regardless, OG seem to be right back in the swing of things. But it, 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 again, I know we've, we've I, put I, so much weight on this, but it's just that for Astralis, right? Given the qualifying match for the major, they seem so distraught in this one that the reset's going to be so hard, isn't it? Yeah, uh, losing is one thing. I mean, and then you get into a round where you just... Oh, oh dear. Yeah, it's just like they don't even have like a, a fighting chance. Like, I mean, you lose that round to Flames, right? With the Deagle in the AK-47, that is so crushing to just help you get back into a game like that. There's there's nothing you can really do to recover from a round like that. And also, the losing team will have to play phase tomorrow. So. That's right. <laughs> My word. <laughs> Astralis in for a very rough, rough weekend. It feels like it at the moment. Finally get it back here alone inside of the bomb site. He's what? got absolutely no help. Flames <laughs> up the ladder. Still I mean, getting the kill on Fl Farlig yeah, eventually. Taking all the attention away, giving yeah. away the information of his position and making sure Farlig has a hard time tracking him. So, I mean, at the very least, doing something to make that easier. Config close up with the SMG. Going to pull the trigger. They line up. Double kill for him. And a flashbang to slow things down afterwards. That is a fighting chance now for Astralis. Yeah, might even be a decent chance at the moment. Nex is almost dead. He's trapped in there. Dextra close with the AWP. Pulls out the Deagle, but he can't find the shot. And again, Nexa is just a bullet away. There should be nothing you do. No bomb plan either. So I, what a round from Config here. Ends up with a quad kill. That SMG paying for itself in a huge way. They should have not won this round at all. But I guess they, they well, deserve to get one back. They want to take over CT spawn, right? They get stopped by this reload, and that, I mean, that's just perfect. And remember, that's that's a position where there's just so little cover based off players being in con, based off players being in jungle or peeking from jungle. Like, there's only really that one little corner. Yeah, and you can see the frustration. He's saying, peek, we can't both be here. We can't both be in this spot. Config saves the day. So a little bit of life for Astralis. Another boost from Dexter. Nexa going down. Nice aggressive move from Blamef. Oh, but he walks right into it. it it's he had the right read. He he was gonna go check that, but smoke just slightly make it a little bit awkward. Maybe his bottom of his shoes oh, joined now. That's what? very awkward. He's lost his damn mind, Jason. Oh, oh so much config. Yep. This is the config we want. We need this version of config back. They need it badly <laughs> for <the> flames. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it possible that he, it's in his contract? He like he signed a contract for his life that he has to get double kills, and so he's like every every round he's like, please. It's so dumb. I... Let's see. Sit back in. They're low on health, and there is a minute, so he's gonna go check middle. Not see anyone. Might be. How does he read where they're going? From his point of view, they just they've just left. Well, 
this is where he's built his career situations like this high pressure look it's great having a config in this kind of a performance with the double kill he puts into the board i'm not sure what that was but this is so freakishly gross like your form of config doesn't matter if flames just deletes you like that and even blame f has to give a little bit of respect in the round now zipix has read the situation perfectly he's over here in market he has the right read and they're low on health yep. You have a Molotov to bomb, has been get a little bit of safety behind that bomb plant, smoke as well. So at least they get that much. Now, he has a smoke of his own, and that's a huge tool if you want to try and force out the fight, especially if you could turn it into a one versus one. Already creeping around. Got the right idea on one of them, second one of the hallways. That's probably not a surprise, but he's so exposed out here. If he takes this fight early and they just double peek him, it's a disaster. Sneaking through, one still back here, and he misses the initial shot. He probably needs to get it almost immediately. He still will. Oh my God, that is a great 180 spin. And a little bit of life shown here from the clutch minister himself. Yeah, a huge save. An absolutely massive save. And that's maybe one of those scenarios where Neofrag just should have played individually, let his teammate die there, not overextend yeah. and play with the bomb. Remember, with the bomb planted in this fashion with it running down, it's essentially a three versus one. So maybe a little bit early for the pounce for Neofrag, but you can understand the idea. It was him. We asked who yesterday had the strong Cordova. It's definitely him. Yeah, he's he's perfected it. Yep. Now there's a online left kill. He's going to be hustling back to tap the bomb to try and pull me out. If I peek right now, he's not going to be expecting it. He'll be looking for the bomb. You know, there's a whole host of thoughts that go through your mind in that moment. And it's got to be a split second decision. Careful now. Don't want to be losing to the deagles. Good job from Blame F. Following it up and taking down the next set. Neil Frank going to be found here. Dexter in flames. By the way, Dexter's up to 23 kills. So he's sort of quietly taken over everybody at this point in time, which is kind of cool. But it's a really good chance. Should be Astralis here at 12 to 13. That's that's a great catch up. They still have a shot at doing this. They can still get us onto Inferno, Inferno which we deserve. Dexter heard the op scope. Gonna turn, he should be able to find Blame F, but that aggressive push doesn't let him save his teammate. Never even got to worry about the op back in CT spawn. One round back is Astralis. Yeah, they're getting close. You can see that you can read the stress in their faces right now. They they are um There's a, a veteran roster in some way. I mean maybe not the roster itself, but the, but in terms of the amount of years collectively having played Counter Strike here on the Astralis side, right? It's it's absolutely absurd. That's I mean that's part of what makes what makes it so absurd that they're still fighting for a spot in the major, which is which is I know just a crazy thought and the legacy of the Astralis as an organization. Yeah, but you also think they've been under this kind of stress many, many times throughout their careers. So you have to assume that they they can remember what it's like and, and try and dig themselves out from under. Almost the flick on Farley gets a nice attempt. Oh, and Flames with the opening just up on the back of that bench. He's ready for this one too. <laughs> that is such an extreme angle. What are you supposed to do against this guy? Like, he was reading the future, too? Yeah, maybe. He might actually be the one. That would have been the perfect example. Five on three. Dexter might be top of the scoreboard, but Flames is just unreal. Zipix pushed all the way up. No flashbang on Dexter. It's got to be a hard clear from Flames. He does it, but he can't win the fight. Zipix is trapped, though. Yep, has to stick around us very often. Good smoke, though. 45 seconds. That'll really slow Push them down. Push from config. Push from config. This is huge. Fiku. Fiku's ready for it. Shuts him down. You're right. That was the, that would have been the round winning move. And now they're going to be finding Glaive. So even if Sip... I like everything about that. Winning the fight, putting up the smoke, buying a little bit of time for config. But they needed they needed that, that little flank to work out. I, and it, it would have been very easy to get caught by config there. You got to give props uh, over, to, over to Fiku finding that kill. Just being ready for the next fight that was going to follow up once they got stalled out. He very easily could have just been a little lazy turning that corner. Oh, they want to take the AK, although that's becoming an expensive uh, run here. They don't have any money really on the OG side, so at this point, they might just slow it down. Yeah. Some cash still on Astralis, so the AK is going to make a huge difference, but OG cannot afford to just throw everything away. Yeah, I think actually those two weapons, that, that was maybe a little overeager on this hunt. You can understand why they went for it, but this is going to punish them massively going into the next round. Especially because, as you mentioned, with the money built up behind Astralis, it's going to be another very strong buy for the CT side.
Not out of it just yet. 14 rounds on OG. They're not that far away. But economically, all it takes is one tiny slip up here. And it's done for. This is such a good peak. But the follow-up here is so crazy. I know, it's just disgusting. Blemath is probably never in any world expecting a peak from that angle. No. And, he's, and, and the certainty of the peak as well is like, oh, you you know, you didn't just back into the corner and realize there was a fight. You actually, you, you planned it. This round is everything. Astralis can be knocked knocked down to the last chance against FaZe right here. If they can't win this round, they'll be out of money. And Config with a four on five is going to feel the pressure to make a play. That's exactly what Fiku's hoping for. Here it comes. Good find. Good find from Config. Yeah, absolutely essential. The bomb quite far back. Not that Config's going to go find it, but you got to be a little bit careful. That's a... Almost three people peeking that angle. One of them behind the box and a bomb site, but Glaive is going to be winning the fight against Dexter. A little bit of an awkward off angle there for Sip. Molotov will force him back out, and he almost had it. If not for the flashbang, he might have been able to actually find that kill. Instead, it's Flames with one on Sip. And usually when it comes to Flames, when there's one, there's got to be one followed up as well. Does he see it? He does, and he'll take down Config. Eventually will fall, but Glaive... One versus two, and the bomb planted. What do you even do? You almost have to just go for it. And his position given up as well. Yeah. And he's got to do it quick. He's got no kit, but he does have 23 kills. He's been the hot hand for Astralis, and now he's got information on Nexa. Yeah, he sees one. That's absolutely massive. And we'll see. There is a kit on the ground at least, so a little bit more time being gained. Walks right over it. 23 kills on Glaive. Looking for a quad kill clutch here. He's going to fake it out once with a smoke on top. He's a long time away from getting that kill, and De Nexa instead will take him down, so... Close, but not close enough. If he would have got it, the other player would have been on the other side of the smoke, and maybe he could have gone for that defuse, but it is 15 on the side of OG. This is the equalizing kill from Config in that palace push. That was a nice start. Yeah, he's a little bit surprised that Config was able to see him that early, but Flames again with a double kill. The position from Config is great, pushing in front of the smoke to catch him off guard, but couldn't find the first kill clean enough. Three chances for OG to take this series to knock Astralis down and start their day in a very rough way. Yeah, true indeed. 15 to 12, and almost, no, just what, Deagles and Scout here to play with, to try and bring it into overtime. I think it's possible, Jason, that they are saving strats for the Major. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's cruel. I'm sorry. Saving strats for the major qualifier. There we go. The qualifier to the major qualifier. I like it. The fourth pre-qualifier to the major qualifier. Saving strats, maybe so the phase don't know. It's a long-term plan. 28th round. We need more than just a miracle here for the Astralis side. A whole string of them, a whole cluster of miracles if possible. The damage on a Farley to begin with. Trying to get that early Deagle shot off. Config is in here as well. Definitely has some great Deagle highlights in his career, Config. Now is the time. And he's back up to 20 kills. Again, started this with 1-7 scoreline at one point early on in the in the, in the map here. So good little recovery. Ooh. Yes, nice shot. Flames out of the round. That's the first one. Yeah, do it. Give us another one. Still going to be a tough round with just Deagles. OG still encroaching towards this B bomb site. There's a kill from Nex, actually. Everyone's coming over. You're never going to expect Config beneath you. Trade it off. Bomb hits the deck, but it's close to the site. Two players here, one in Market and Zipix on the back side of the site. They've got to protect him, but they can't with just the Deagle. Glaive can't get it done. Bomb Five going seconds. down, and yeah, right in the perfect moment. Oh, and a jump out Glaive. He wanted to use that bomb being planted as a moment where you knew one of those three players wasn't going to be looking, and in the end, it'll be O2 